this is biotechnica and you're listening to india's first life science podcast the voice of biotechnica ever wondered how true the saying is you are the predator right up until you are the prey that is what life is all about where every predator is someone's prey and every prey is someone's predator it is all the consequence of evolution bringing in variation diversity and complex interactions among living beings in turn fueling more evolution so we can say evolution is the driving force evolution is the process and evolution itself is the outcome quite interesting cycle of nature which is so productive yet so merciless welcome to today's podcast where we will understand one such interesting outcome of evolution the deadliest being on planet earth the bacteriophage presented by biotechnica team member sunita evolution is at work that we can easily say looking at the diversity of life around us life began as a so called lca last common ancestor and flourished into millions of diversified species and one of those so called most evolved and dominant species today is homo sapiens that is us but this most advanced and dominant species have also time and again fallen prey to tiny microscopic prokaryotes that is bacteria throughout the human history there are multiple accounts of deadly epidemics and pandemics caused by bacterial pathogens almost wiping out its existence hence we can say it is a deadly organism though less evolved yet so powerful posing a constant potential threat to the great and mighty human race but is this minuscule one micrometer bacteria existing in trillions of trillions in number all immune all invincible and all immortal no there is someone to challenge it someone who preys on it and that is the bacteria eater bacteriophage also known as phages phages are type of viruses that are obligate intracellular parasites of bacteria first description of phage was given by frederick tort in 1915 who observed characteristic zone of lysis in bacteria which is associated with phage infection later felix de henry independently identified the source of this phenomena and attributed the plagues to bacterial viruses subsequently the term bacteriophage was coined by him They are highly abundant in nature existing approximately in total about 10 to the power 31 in number. It is more than any other species on earth. Even all the bacteria collectively cannot match the towering number of viruses. On contrary, they are tinier than their prey and are visible only under scanning electron microscopy. Mostly their size ranging in nanometers. Phages are available in diverse habitats like oceans, hot springs, soil, glacier, and even human intestine. In terms of form, specificity, and function, their diversity is unmatched in nature. And the most interesting aspect of a phage is that it is considered at the borderline of living and non-living. This is because they do not have any elaborate cellular component as found in case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Phage architecture is quite simple. A protein capsid containing a simple genetic material in form of either DNA or RNA. 
So even though they possess genetic material but have no means of propagating it. Thus, they are completely dependent on their host, that is the bacteria, for their propagation. Phages float around, waiting for the encounter with specific host. When they collide with any bacteria, their attachment will be dependent on the availability of specific receptor on the bacterial surface. Likewise, phages also bear specific equipment like tails, hooks, etc. which help them to bind bacterial receptors. Attachment is often followed by injection of phage genetic material into the bacterial cell. There are two distinct fate of this phage genetic material, lytic and lysogeny. First one is where the bacterial machinery will be hijacked and deployed for replication of phage genome and expression of phage genes, ultimately leading to assembly of new phage particles. When numerous phage particles assemble inside the host, approximately 1000 or so, then bacteria are lysed and the phages are released. Second fate is where fate genome inserts itself into the host genome and passively replicates along with it. During this more parasite-like existence, the fate genome is passed down from mother host to daughter vertically. Phages which follow lytic cell cycle known as lytic phage and which follow lysogeny are called as temperate phage. Temperate phages can often shift to lytic cycle depending on the various environmental conditions. So preliminary the propagation of phages require destruction of bacteria. Almost every second approximately 2 into 10 to the power 16 phage mediated gene transfer in bacteria occur globally. Such a huge extent of bacterial attack by phage accounts for destruction of nearly 40% of bacteria available in ocean every day. Hence, phages play a very significant yet invisible role in the biological world and ecology as well as evolution. Being an active part of microbial food chain, their role is indispensable in maintenance of bacterial population turnover and recycling of elements like carbon, nitrogen, etc. in nature. Concurrently, this predator-prey relationship is the working force behind the evolution of both bacteria and phage population. Bacteria continuously develop defenses to evade phage infection and survive, while simultaneously phages also create new strategies to break those defenses. Thus, a continuous evolutionary arms race commenced right from their origin millions of years ago has led to tremendous diversification of both bacteria and phages on the earth. Further, phages play a key role in horizontal gene transfer as they mobilize genes from one host to another. This mechanism is very well known as transduction, where part of host DNA is packed inside the phage head along with viral DNA. When this phage infects another bacterial host, the previous host DNA is transferred to it. This can create variation in gene combinations giving rise to new properties like virulence and antibiotic resistance. Such type of gene transfer is beneficial for bacteria giving it an edge over others in terms of survival, reproduction and evolution. In fact, one such example is of R-type pyrocenes and type 6 secretion systems which are phage tail-like structures encoded by bacterial genome. These are used for delivering proteins to both prokaryotes and eukaryotes or for killing by puncturing cells. Thus, it can be concluded that phages even have the capacity to transform bacteria. Phages might have diverse effect, but their ability to kill bacteria has proved useful for humans. But how? Well, people thought of using phages against bacterial diseases. 
a therapeutic method termed as phage therapy. In 1925, D. Hurley reported treatment of plaque four types by anti-plaque phages which drew attention towards phage therapy. Many researchers worked on phage therapy and achieved positive results. But by late 1930s, the idea of phage therapy looked no longer promising. But what happened? The major reason for this were first, emergence of antibiotics, which appeared much more safer and successful. Second, early phage therapy experiments were found to be unreliable and inconsistent. And finally, third, poor understanding of phage biology and uncertainty over the downstream processing. But now we understand phages better and have advanced in the field of biopharmaceutical production. Moreover, with emergence of antibiotic resistant bacterial pathogens, the world is facing a serious threat of some major pandemic. So in such crisis, with paucity of any new effective antibiotic, as an alternative treatment, phage therapy can be employed. Phages being host-specific do not kill non-specific bacteria, which means only the pathogens will be killed and commensals will be spared. Such type of distinction is not possible in case of antibiotics as they work on all bacteria. Thus, antibiotics harm the normal microflora. This is an added advantage of phage therapy apart from being harmless as there is no probability of phages infecting eukaryotic cells. Both natural and modified phages have given promising results in the ongoing clinical trials worldwide. Phages can be used to destroy the target pathogenic bacteria. One currently conducted phageoburn clinical trial is at phase 1 and 2 level. This trial is carried out by three European countries and the motive of trial is to check the safety and efficacy of phages for the treatment of burn wounds infected with E. coli and P. aeruginosa. Similar trials are being conducted in Netherlands and USA against Listeria monocytogens for increasing the shelf life of processed foods. Another way in which phages can be employed is for specific targeting of antibiotics to pathogens. Since phages are host specific, antibiotics can be conjugated to phages and delivered to specific cells thus increasing the efficacy of the antibiotic therapy. Additionally, modified phages can be developed to inject desired genes which transform the pathogen. For example, genes introduced can enhance antibiotic sensitivity of the bacteria, improve drug uptake capacity and even repress biofilm formation, in turn restoring the efficacy of the drug. And the final approach of phage therapy employs proteins harvested from phages, endolysing, tail spike or diffusible polysaccharide depolymerizing enzyme of phages can be used for lysis of specific bacteria or to stop them from forming biofilms which can reduce the virulence. And all this aids in easy immune clearance of the pathogen from the body, decreasing the chance of infection and disease. From all this, we can conclude that the most abundant killer on earth, a bacteriophage, could be given the tag of deadliest being as it devours mercilessly numerous bacteria every second. But they are equally important for conservation and sustenance of life. Until now, whatever we have understood about phage biology has proven quite rewarding to human. The most illustrious outcome to be mentioned here is the CRISPR-Cas, which has revolutionized the field of recombinant DNA technology. 
with more research and deeper understanding in this area of biology many more fantastic and beneficial surprises can be unraveled but for now let us wait and watch the course of phage therapy whether it will arise to give us the panacea against bacterial pathogens or will it also face the same consequences of antibiotics with this note i'm signing off today but do let us know what is your opinion on phage therapy will it succeed